Hello everyone, I hope you are all well. We are here again for another live stream. So uh, we've got an awful lot to, get, to actually get through today. So please say hello in the comments and uh, I'll get your names up there as soon as you say who you are. Be great if you do, and then we can uh, we can get going. But actually, we have got so much to do today, it's unbelievable. But I'm gonna to stick to half an hour. Whatever happens, half an hour is all we're gonna do. But I reckon we can get through most of this in the time. Welcome to those of you who are doing IT, GCSE or A-level, because I know that the binary components, the binary shifts, the hex conversions, you need that for all of these courses. So let's push on and see how far we can get today. So units and numbers is the area that we're looking at. But let's jump back, first of all, and do a quick bit of quizzing around what we had last time. This is a fabulous case of... Uh, it's Hi, Aditya. How are you? It's good to see you. Uh, good to see you again. You were you were quick last week. So let's hope you've, uh, you've got your your thinking hat on. Hi, Muthana, how are you doing? Good to see you. Right, guys, this is the rewind from last time. Let's shove this one up there and see what you can remember about this. So this was more RAM, PC performance, speed up access to data, excessive use of uh, virtual memory can cause disk thrashing, um, which I call trashing at some point, which decreases performance. Can anyone remember what this was all about? Hi, Flynn, how are you doing? Really good to see you. Let's bring you down to there. That's a bit neater. Good to see you guys. I can see we've got quite a few here at the moment. We're up to about what? Up to about 15 now, so that's pretty good. Any ideas? Hi, Yusuf, how are you doing? Great to see you, and don't worry, I'll stick to the half an hour. Um, any ideas what this question might have been around? We did this last week. Uh, this was quite a nasty one. So has anyone got any ideas what this one could be about? Okay, numbers are building. What do we think? Any idea? I haven't really got time to hang around today. Oh, hello. Uh, nice to see you, Sarah's. Uh, Aditya, advantages of RAM over VM. That is absolutely outstanding. Uh, that is really good. So let's go for a uh, bit of a congratulations for you because that is what we're looking for. Advantages of RAM over virtual memory. Okay, explain why it's beneficial. I took out Alicia, we didn't want to talk about her again, to get RAM instead of relying on virtual memory. So that is really, really good, okay? Let's have a look at the next one. Quiz time rewind, uh, only got one more of these. And this is the one that everyone keeps getting wrong. This is more for the computer science students, this one, but don't worry, the rest of it is for everyone. What are these registers? Uh, if you hear dogs going mad in the background, that's because we have mad dogs. Whoa! Sergan was in there, and that was uh, that was the one from the minute ago. So let's. Uh, so that was right for the previous one. Do we know A, B, C, D? Which registers are these? Now Bogdan almost nailed this last week. Anyone remember what these are? I think this is the hardest bit of the uh, of the CPU bit. Seize the accumulator. Hash Brown, welcome. Um, okay, we've got quite a few in here now. Uh, so seize the accumulator, store the result. Yes, it is. Any ideas? And Hash Brown, you've done the clever thing, which is pick the one that you can definitely get and then work from there. We've got MAD. Hi, MAD. How are you doing? Um, MAR, MDD, MDR, MDR, MDR. I'm, just, I'm going mad. MAR, MDR, ACC. That was MAD. Uh, we've got Hash Brown saying hello again. Bogdan, MAR, MDR, ALU, program counter. We've got, hi Bogdan, by the way, nice to see you. We have got Aditya who's saying A is Ma. We've got the Pixelator who's in with M-A-R, M-D-R, A-C-C, P-C. And we've got uh, R. Kelly Sun who is A is M-A-R. And uh, hi to you. And we've got Sharjeev as well. Hi Sharjeev. So let's put everyone out of their misery. I can tell you, you were a lot more accurate than you were last time. So this week, try and chip off one more. And you've only got two to learn. So MAR stores the address where data will be read. MDR stores the data fetch from memory. Accumulator stores the result of the calculation. That was Sergan there. <laughs> uh, you, you, well, I suppose you can make notes in your fair copy book as long as they're neat. I suppose I have used the word fair copy quite a lot. I'm just inflicting my school experience on you, really. Um, no, I don't know who R. Kelly is. Is R. Kelly a pop star? Uh, R. 
Kelly. Sounds like a pop star. Am I am I along the right? Uh, it's sometime after Pink Floyd, so I don't really know. Sorry about that. OK, guys. So today's plan is this. Um, oh, Ibrahim. Hello, Ibrahim. How are you doing? Uh, this is what we're doing. Memory and storage. And for those of you who aren't doing this particular course, um, it doesn't matter. For A-level, this is included, too. And for the IT, I know that this is something that will help if you know. So this is from the spec for the uh, computer science course. So we've got, first of all, the units, bit, nibble, byte, all of that stuff. You need to know what they are. You need to know what size they are. And you need to know how much, how many bits in a nibble and bytes in a kilobyte and so on. OK, the rest of it. Can you see how I've just in, I've just highlighted convert, add, convert, add and binary ships? Because really, that is the um, not Ibrahim. OK, well, we'll keep the uh, keep the suspense going. I'm not sure who it is. So if we go on to the next one, which is in more detail on 1.2.3 units, we'll have a look at these and I'll explain to you um, how they work and their sizes. And then we'll talk about how data needs to be converted to binary or why it needs to be converted. And then we'll look at capacity requirements and we'll go through this about why in binary format and so on. OK, and then just a bit more detail for you on uh, on the next part, convert, add, convert and binary shift, which really is our job today which is why I'm speaking so quickly, because I've got a lot to get through. Something I wanted to say to you on the right hand side there, can you see it says required uh, deanery range 0 to 255, which is basically an eight bit number. So you needn't go any greater than eight bit. And they actually say it again. They do repeat a lot in this syllabus. Ability to deal with binary numbers containing between one and eight bits. So eight bits is the maximum they'll ask you to do. And actually quite often tends to be the one they ask you to do. So that's the uh, that's the plan today. Uh, hello, man like Paul. Then why aren't you appearing on my thing down here? Maybe it comes later. Who knows? 10 minute teach. Uh, now, notice I've changed this from a five minute teach to uh, to a uh, indeed the same to you, man like Paul. Great name. Just a cracking name. Wish I was called Paul. Um, and what's the ditty you're telling me here? Um, one terabyte for one dinner bit too much for my stomach. Yeah, terabyte would be a lot for dinner, wouldn't it? I've noticed I've changed this to 10 minute teach because I reckon five minutes is going to be me talking at 2000 words a minute. So let me run through what we need to do. First thing, cross reference this back to the specification because I've picked out every single item in the specification and uh, I'm hoping that we can cover it all. So why do computers use binary? Right. It's really simple. Computers consist of transistors and circuits. These components have two states, on, which is current flowing through them, or off, which is no current. So that's why it's easily represented in binary. These are these are these are cables, these are these are um, gates, these are circuits that are either on or off. And so that is why that's why binary works so well with computers. One is on and zero is off. All right, so uh, what else have we got here? Uh, that guy is sus, you know, is he? Well, that's not what I've heard. Sanuka, how are you? It is really, really good to see you. Um, I think we'll try and avoid any human trafficking for the time being, if we possibly can. All right, good. So this is the very busy table, but I imagine that you know this, but you might need to go back and revise it. So the smallest, the smallest unit you've got is the bit, which stands for binary digit. Binary digit bit, do you see that? Zero or one. So if, it, if it's one bit uh, in terms of color, it's black or white. So that's one bit, isn't it? And you've got a nibble, which is four bits. Um, and then you've got a byte, which is eight bits. See the hilarity of bit, nibble and byte? So bit's the smallest and you've got the nibble, which is four bits. And then you've got the byte, which is eight bits. And then we go into kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes. And we're talking... A thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand. So a thousand kilobytes in a megabyte, a thousand megabytes in a gigabyte, a thousand gigabytes in a terabyte, and so on. Notice that actually on the right hand side, it's 1024, but it tends to get rounded up to thousands and you are allowed to uh, to do that. Um, good to see Emad berating Ibrahim. Um, what else can you do really? So there we are. So make sure you make sure that you know those. There's not much that I can tell you other than the fact you need to know them. So let's move on to the next bit. We've talked about units, the next bit you get it. 
Calculate size of files. I'm not sure that you know this. So you can be asked to calculate the size of a sound file, an image file or a text file. So just to dig in there, it's quite easy because they tell you all the information you need. But equally, they might give you some information that you don't need. So, for example, in a sound file, if you're asked to calculate the size, you will take the sample rate and the duration and the bit depth and you multiply them together. Don't forget, the sample rate is how many times a second the sample is taken. The duration is how long the sample is. And the bit depth is the quality of the sample that you take. So that'll be in bits. So sample rate, which will be a number of times a second, times duration in seconds, times bit depth. This is all very samey, but you need to make sure that you know what to multiply by what, because they might put in some extra information just to see if you try multiplying everything together. Can I leave that on the screen? Yeah, I can leave it on the screen. Don't forget, I will send you the um, the PDF for this afterwards, OK, so you can go through this. I was trying to do some maths on this, um, that it took Miss Silver about two hours to make the slides she gave me. It took me another three or four hours to get this into shape. So I reckon that six hours is, is what it took to get this already, which might be which might equate to how long it will take you to get through this chunk of it, maybe four to six hours. It depends where you are now, but there is some learning here. So let's jump on to um, image file. Same deal. You, you, you multiply the color depth by the image height by the image width. So actually the physical size of the image and the height and width of the image are in pixels and the color depth is in bits. All right. Bits, bits, bits. Um, so bits times pixels times pixels. And then you've got um, the text file, much the same. And th if you think about this logically, it makes complete sense. Yeah, it does go on Satchel 1. I will do that, uh, man like Paul. I'll stick it on Satchel 1. Um, I think it's quite useful as a PDF, isn't it? So text file, bits per character times number of characters. That's all you have to do. So they could be super sneaky and put in some uh, some figures that you don't need and see if you just multiply everything together. So of course they could combine this with the previous slide, which is you need to know that there's a thousand kilobytes and a megabyte and so on. Um, and they can, they can make it more challenging that way. But as long as you know what these values are, what the units are, and how to do these calculations, it's quite straightforward. So spend a bit of time, maybe create some mnemonics to learn that, it might help. Um, but when you actually sit down and look at those calculations, it's quite straightforward. Now, this is something that's in the specification and it makes sense, but not obviously, because um, it talks about the fixed capacity of data storage devices. So what this means is that they can do a scenario based question where they will say, what is the most appropriate uh, memory media, memory type to use to store this? And they might make you do some maths. And then if something comes out, at, so for example, you've got CD-ROM which can only hold 640 megabytes. It can hold less, but it can't hold more. A DVD, 4.7 gigabytes. A Blu-ray, up to 50 gigabytes. There's a bit more information here in terms of the write and the read-write and so on, but the basics are a Blu-ray can hold up to 50 gig. USB flash drive from two gig to two terabytes. SSD, up to four terabytes. So slightly smaller than the hard disk drive, which is still the biggest capacity memory drive you can buy with up to 12 terabytes. So just bear in mind that they might ask you which memory type would be most appropriate for storing X amount. And so obviously if something comes out to be a gigabyte and you say Blu-ray, uh -uh. so that's what you need to think about. So just make sure you, you don't need to know those exact figures but you do need to know that these are data storage devices and that they each have a fixed capacity beyond which you've got to buy a second one if you want to go larger. I hope that makes sense anyway. Um, but that, so they could combine the whole nibble bit byte stuff with doing a calculation on sound and then, or images or whatever, and then putting it into a memory storage device. So there could be three separate things going on there. And they haven't done that for a year or two. So I, you, you never know. I, I keep saying it could be in the exam. It might not be, but it could be. All right, so let's crack on to binary. I've had 14 minutes, so I've got to rush through this. I don't know how much time we'll have for more uh, quizzing at the end. 
we're going to look at binary deanery and hex. We know binary is ones and zeros. We know deanery is naught to nine. And we know hex is, uses naught to nine and then A, B, C, D, E, F and F being 15. OK, so that is what we need to understand. And these conversions, I'm going to whiz through these at speed. But I'm hoping that if you play it back afterwards, it will make sense. So I shall try to go quickly, but surely through it. So here's the question. Top left, guys convert one zero one zero one zero one zero see the little two that means it's base two it's binary convert that number into deanery base 10 our number the hardest thing is to draw the grid if you can draw the grid correctly the rest of it is plain sailing so these are this is the binary equivalent of in deanery we'd say uh you know units tens hundreds thousands one two four eight sixteen remember this is the size of the of the memory you buy for your phones so one, so one bit, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, and one, two, eight. All right, and by the way, one bit, two bit, three bit, four bit, five bit, all, all the way across to eight bit, which is two, five, six. You might recognize that from two, five, six colors if you've ever mucked around in Adobe Photoshop. Anyway, it won't be bigger than that. So if you draw this grid out when you've got one of these questions, you will have a grid that might be too large, but it won't be too small. So draw that grid out is the first job. The next one is you drop that number into the grid. So make sure you, you, you put the one in there. If you start with a two, it all goes wrong. Aditya, oh, actually really good question from Emad. Calculators, no. So your mental maths needs to be uh, sharp, but you've got time to do it. And it, it's not that difficult, but take your time and go through it a few times. Um, no, you forget how to do it because we do it and then we leave it for six months. So it's no wonder that you forget. Oh, do you know what? There's a lot of people coming up with some stuff here. I think Aditya and I think Shah, Shahjeev have got some uh, have got some good ideas here. Let's see what we get. So you've dropped it in there. OK, that's that's the step two. You're ahead of the game here. So step three is if you look at this grid, if you've drawn a one, so you, if you've drawn a one in the grid, you look up and you take the number that the one is above. In this case, we've got a one above one to eight, a one, uh, sorry, we've got a 32 above the next one. We've got an eight above the next one and a two above the next one. And all you do is you look at those numbers at the top and you add them together. So one, two, eight plus 32 plus eight plus two, which gives us, and quite a few of you got there anyway, but it is dun, 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 170. So you were outstanding. So let's give you an excitable triangle. Easy peasy. Yeah, easy peasy. Draw the grid. That's the hardest thing is to draw the grid. So that is going, um, that's going from uh, binary to deanery. Now we'll go from deanery to binary. Similar but different. So 170 base 10, our number system going to binary. Happy with that? So we're going to end up with a bunch of ones and zeros and so on. OK, and it's the same number. So we're going back the other way. Guess what? Number one, draw the grid. Number two, and I think you can probably imagine what this is going to be. Maybe not. So the question is, you then ask yourself this question. What is the largest grid number? And the grid numbers are 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 1, 2, 8. What's the largest grid number that fits once into the number you want to convert? And like I say, 1, 2, 8 is going to be... Uh, yeah, yeah, man like Paul is 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 on fire here. Um, so anyway, the point is 128 is the biggest number that goes in once. So guess what you do? You draw a one in that in that column, okay? But then you've got to work out what the remainder is. And let me get out of the way so you can see. Dun, 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 the remainder is 42. Ta da back in the room. The remainder is 42. And guess what? You do exactly the same thing again. You ask the question, what is the biggest number in our grid that goes into 42 once? And it's 32 with a modulus, remainder that is, modulus for your coding, with a modulus of 10. And guess what? We do exactly the same thing again. The, it's, it's straightforward when it's explained like this, but go back and do a bit of practice with it, okay? 10 left over, and we know that then 8 is the biggest number, which leaves us with 2. So guess what we draw in the 2 column? We draw a 1, and what happens to the rest? We simply fill it out with zeros. Da da! That's it. Easy peasy, isn't it? So that is your uh, deanery binary, binary deanery. I almost said binary, which is a new number system consisting of beans. All right. Hex. Hex is easy. 
It's easy when you know. So now they can ask you to do a variety of things with hex, but I want to point this system out to you first of all, right? If they say we want you to convert a hex number into decimal, you first of all convert it to binary and then you convert it into decimal, and the binary decimal thing we've done, okay? Equally, if they want you to convert a decimal number into hex, you first convert it into binary and then you convert it into hex. I'm only going to show you one way because the opposite way is exactly the same, but in but, but in reverse. If you struggle with it, let me know. But it is it's it's really straightforward once you've got the first way sorted out. OK, so this is the this is the 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 question. Yes, decimal. I, I say I shouldn't be saying decimal. I should be saying deanery. Uh, hash brown it's me uh i say decimal decimal was something that's quite big in my life we decimalization was something that happened when i was a kid when we went from having pounds shilling and pence to having decimal currency uh so deanery i should be saying deanery not decimal um deanery or base 10 is what i should be saying okay so my bad all right so the job is we're going to convert 5f which is a hex number because it's got that f in it i mean f is 15 don't we yeah you know, as in A, B, C, D, E, F, F is 15, and then it goes back at 16, okay, like, like it does for 10. So here's what you do. You create two nibble tables. Have a look at these tables. They are two mini tables, two nibble tables, but they are both 1, 2, 4, 8. Both are 1, 2, 4, 8. So this is something you need to remember, is that you draw out the two nibble tables, and then you deal with the two numbers separately. So the 5 you deal with on the left nibble table, and the F you deal with on the right nibble table, which is not something I want to say ever again. Let's take the five first of all. Same principle as we had last time. What's the biggest number on your grid that goes into five ones? It's four. What's left over? One. So that's why we've got we've got the a one under the four and a one under the one. Aditya is on it. Uh, the number is 105. OK, we've got a bit of uh, a bit of difference of opinion here. Have you figured out the F one now? So the F is 15, right? Biggest number that goes in is eight. So that's a one left over a seven. Biggest numbers are four left over a three. Two's the next biggest. So basically this fills out all of the all of the ones here. Happy with that? So look back at that. It's creating the two nibble tables that makes this difficult because it consists of two nibbles, a hex number. All right. I'm not going to give it away, but uh, I think I think I did you might be on the right tracks. So next bit is that you then need to do one more step, which is that that number, that binary number, you then drop into your original table. And then guess what? We did our maths. 64, look at Bogdan here. Aditya, you were the first to get it right, OK? But Bogdan has really helpfully put that on us. Put that there, 64, 16, 8421, OK? Quick maths, 95. Absolutely outstanding. Guys, does that make sense? I've gone through this way, way too quickly. I've only got seven minutes left and I'm not going to overrun. Um, so I don't think we're going to have much time for quizzing today. But that is the uh, the hex conversion. And like I say, 95. Yep. All of you got it right. Uh, yeah, Emad, you can. You can absolutely do that. And the more that you recognise these numbers, the more you can look at it and just work it out. But I would say you've got time in the exam to do it both ways, just to make sure you're certain. As long as you're happy with it and you're doing it right, there's just a danger that you feel the pressure and you rush it. But yeah, you absolutely can do that. And in fact, that's exactly what I would do. All right. So that all makes sense. That is good. All right. So let's shift on then. Um, that is good. You're all making sounds as though you know what you're doing. So don't forget hex to binary, binary to decimal, and then decimal to binary and binary to hex. Okay. That's what that slide was all about. OK, next, binary edition. I'm going to speed up. I've got six minutes. And I'm going to get through this if it kills me. All you need to know to do binary edition. Oh, Bogdan, that's really helpful. I'm glad because you know what? It's sometimes the third or fourth time you go through it and you go, oh, OK, I get it. So that's that's excellent. All you need to know for binary edition is what is on the screen. The first three are obviously no brainers. 0 plus 0 is 0, 0, 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1. It's that third one. 1 plus 1 is 1, 0. Not 10, it's 1, 0. If you remember that, you cannot go wrong with binary addition. So let's look at this one here. I am going to work, you see top right, we've got 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0 added to 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. Happy? So that's what we're going to do. 
So let me run through it. Obviously, we're going to start on the top right. And as we're doing this, look at the bit on uh, in grey on the bottom left there, because if that's the mantra, all right, uh, absolutely, the deanery number two is stored as one zero completely. Um, and that's why the hilarious computer science joke is there are only one zero type of people in the world. <laughs> so funny. So let's run through it. Top right hand side, zero plus zero is zero. Second column, one plus zero is one. Zero plus one is one. We've done the first three, okay? But then we get to the exciting bit, one plus one is one zero. So you write down the zero and you carry the one up to the top. One plus one again is one zero. You write the zero down and you carry the one to the top. One plus zero plus zero is one and zero plus zero is zero. And if I have to say zero or one anymore, I think I'm gonna start screaming. Does that make sense? You honestly only need to remember two things. One is that one plus one is one zero, wishing you hadn't said one. And two is that you start from the right hand side. Other than that, it should be OK. But if you write two in it, you have gone badly wrong. So that is binary addition. I've got four minutes left, which means that I'm going to need to move on. Binary shifts. Binary shifts. Binary shifts are a really quick way that processors can divide and multiply. Hi, Chris, how are you? Good to see you. Um, right shifting is dividing and left shifting is multiplying. They might ask you that. They might ask you to perform a, a, a right or left shift, but notice there's performing a shift and explaining what a shift does, the impact of a shift, okay? So right shift is division. So what you do is you move all the bits one place to the right but the rightmost bit falls off the end, it's discarded. And then the, 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 the space that's being, that's being created by moving to the right, that bit on the left, it's given a zero, okay? So that's what happens, and that's the way that it divides. But because you lose that bit, the figure is less accurate. So what is the impact, what's the effect? It, you divide the number, and if you do, if you do uh, the, the more times that you do the shift, the more times that you're dividing. Okay, exactly the same with the left shift. Left shift is multiplying. Find a mnemonic to remember that. I couldn't think of one. Left bit is discarded. The remaining bits go one bit to the left. And again, the empty place on the right is filled with a zero. But it does mean that the result is less accurate because you lose that last that last number. All right. So those are bits. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? So that is binary shifts. I've got three minutes. I'm going to finish on time. Do you know what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to do a quiz time. Oh, I can do this one. Go on. Doing a logical shift left does what to a binary number? Do we know? Doing a logical shift left. Is it 50-50? Any ideas? What does it do? I'm I'm impressed that we got through this. Oh, we've got, we've got A, we've got B, we've got a difference of opinion. Pixelator saying multiply. Hi, Pixelator, how are you? Let me get in there. There we go. We've got Diddle with B. We've got Hash Brown B. We've got Chris with B. I can't keep up. You're all being. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's get on B. Uh, we've got Rhea. Hi, Rhea. We've got B. Did my next one come up? I didn't click on it. Uh, you going to work? Yay, there we go. It's B, multiply. You are all outstanding. I've got two minutes left. Let's try and squeeze in one more of these. OK, doing a two bit left logical shift has what effect? I'm pleased this, this one's in here because I didn't exactly tell you, but I gave you an indication and they sometimes ask this. Doing a two bit left logical shift, which means we're moving across two numbers, if you like, two bits, divides the number by two, multiplies the number by two. Oh, look at this. We've got B, we've got D. I can't keep up. Swift blade. We've got Pixelator, we've got Emad, we've got Aditya, we've got, hi Serena, we've got Conzo Bonzo, good day, we've got Sergan, hello dear boy, we've got Flynn, we've got Swift, we've got Emily May, hi, welcome, we've got Hash Brown, we've got Mariam, hi Mariam. Uh, okay, 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 you're all telling me the answer, so just stop yabbering and put it up here. There we go, it, my head's in the way, it multiplies the number by four, okay? So two bit logical, uh, two bit logical shift has what effect? It multiplies the number by four, and you all got that right because you are 
Superstars, guys, it's seven o'clock, so I need to really shut up. And I'm not going to go through any more of this now. I will put these on the, um, I'll put these on the, on the, on the PDF and I'll send it through. What I do want to do, which unfortunately I've got to click through thousands of slides to get there, but we've not got far to go. I just want to talk to you about how you can uh, make sure that you're okay with this topic. So I might go on until 7.01, if no one minds too much. Revision ideas, here we go. So <laughs> I knew I'd gone too far. So revision ideas, I think, first of all, make sure that you are absolutely OK with all of these conversions. Secondly, make sure that you've learned how to convert the sound files, the image files, all that sort of stuff. Make sure that you're happy with those. And then lastly, make sure that you understand and remember the steps of how to do these conversions and have a look at a few past paper questions, because uh, uh, because it can be quite challenging to complete these in the exam. I've got one piece of advice for you, right, is that when you are doing these conversions, don't do a bunch of uh, addition. You know, don't do four or five addition. Do an addition and then do a, a conversion from hex to deanery or do. So, you know, vary it. So you're doing something different each time. Because otherwise, you learn a block of them and then and then all you know is that block. So. Cognitive science tells us that it's better if you actually break it up and do a different one each and every single time. I can't get back to my slide there, I think, because I clicked next too many times. Guys, it's 1901. So have a lovely half term next week. After half term, that's what we're going to cover. Um, binary codes represent characters. Look at ASCII, um, metadata, sound. There's quite a lot in there. But well done so far. I'll put this on YouTube. I'll, as soon as I finish, I shall put it on YouTube for you. I'll get the PDF out to you sometime today or tomorrow. Um, and I'll see you all in school tomorrow. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.